open your ears, and lube up your butthole. It's time for the What Do We Call It podcast. Now, here's your host, it's J-Man. Welcome to the What Do We Call It podcast. I'm J-Man. And I'm the Ruin fan, Tim. The Juice. The Juice. My oldest, she's almost eight, and she is not very poised or coordinated. At that age, I don't expect any child to be. Which, why the other day I was shocked when she was swinging on the trapeze bar at the playground, which is basically like a pull-up bar. Mm -hmm. She was swinging back and forth and then tried to execute a 180-degree twist dismount. What? Hmm. Right. She said she was going to be fancy. And how'd that go? She landed flat on her fucking hip with her arm pinned underneath her. And then she immediately would not stop crying and saying, owie, 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 owie. It was a six block walk fucking home from the park. Owie, 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 shut the fuck up. Owie, 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 God, please kill me now. Owie, 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 that's right, I don't believe in God, so he's not going to do it, so I have to suffer. Owie, owie, shut up, here's some Tylenol. Anyway, so... We get home, and I examine her wrist. And her wrist looks fine. It's not discolored. It's not contorted. It's not even bruised. So we give her a little bit of Tylenol, and we ice it. And she Mm -hmm. takes a nap, and she wakes up. Standard protocol. And we ice it some more, and then my wife, the Dirty Bee, she uh, compression bandages it. You would think that the average person would look at that level of care and decide that perhaps you might know a thing or two about caring for injuries of that nature. Yeah, it's. I mean, I'm not trained or anything, but if one of my kids had something like that, you know, we usually ice it, give them some Tylenol, relax, you know, stuff like that. Uh, Mrs. Number One, she sometimes will do a wrap. I know Drama's had a, a knee injury from gymnastics that she's been trying to work through, so she's got a a wrap and she ices it and takes ibuprofen when needed which isn't very often but so what I described the way that we treated it I did a primary assessment I looked for discoloration or misshapen joint swelling bruising obvious physical signs Mm -hmm. and then I did a pain test with touch which was kind of hit or miss like I said you would think that with knowledge that I was able to do those things, I might be qualified to care for such injuries. Weren't you trained as a first responder working where you used to work? Thank you very much. Who did not think that I knew what I was talking about? I'm going to guess... The Beast. The Beast. Who, when I told her the next morning, said, Why the fuck didn't you take her to the ER? Because I didn't think I had to. I wouldn't think I'd have to. And she's like, well, just because you think you know what you're doing, you're not a fucking doctor. So she could be walking around with a broken arm and you don't even know. I'm like, no, she doesn't have a broken arm that I could tell. And uh, more importantly, after we got through the icing, the nap, the Tylenol, the second icing, and the compression wrap, we went to another playground and she fucking played. She was fine. Sounds to me like she was fine. So the next day I took her home. That was the litmus test. How she would get through that first day at home with the beast. Because that was a Monday. And at some point, she couldn't pull her underwear up without complaining in the bathroom. But still, not swollen, not discolored, not contorted, anything of that nature. So, the beast, being the genius and the combative bitch that she is, goes, I'm taking her to the urgent care and you should have done that yesterday. Well, for starters, the injury happened at 6.30 on a fucking Sunday. My options are ER or ER. The urgent care Sunday hours are kind of hit or miss. Urgent care is going to send you to the ER anyways for x-rays. So, I mean, you might as well skip the urgent care if you have an injury like that. So she says she's taking her to the urgent care. And I'm like, whatever. I knew I was never going to hear the end of it, but I was hoping for the best. And then she texts me and says, I need the medical card. I keep possession of their of their Blue Cross Blue Shield card. Because I know that the beast is a dingbat who loses things because she's dumb 
because she smokes weed still. And, as Dave Chappelle once said in a voiceover during the movie Half-Baked, marijuana affects the memory. <laughs> it does. And I don't want her to lose the shit. Okay. I pay for the goddamn premiums, therefore I hold the cards. That's my argument. Because I have one spot where I keep them, the shit doesn't get lost. Mm-hmm. So, she says she needs it. She wants me to bring it to her. I'm like, fine. She's like, well, hang on. I don't want you to come here. What do you mean? I don't want you to be here at the urgent care. I don't want to see you. But it's not about if you want to see me. It's about, is our child injured? She's like, I don't care. And then she hangs up on me. Cool. And I'll take my daughter to the hospital. You can leave and abandon her at the hospital. Well, this is where I said, I'm not bringing the card then. You can fuck yourself. Because I'm going to show up whether you like it or not. And she's, once again, she texts me again before it was, you know, we had talked a little bit on the phone and she hung up on me. Does everybody text everything now? I'm getting tired of texting, to be honest. We have to text so that it doesn't devolve into a fight. You can still fight through a text. We can, but we don't fight as loudly or as viciously when we keep it to text. I suppose. Trial and error. I've been measuring this shit for five fucking years. So she says, and I quote, if you show up, I'm going to fucking leave. Well, first off, you can't do that because you've already got her there. Well, I just don't want to see you. But it's not about me. And frankly, there's nothing you can do. Well, if you show up, I'm going to call the cops. What what good is that going to do? And tell them what? That I've shown up to a public place uh, under concern for my daughter because her condition worsened. With a card that you needed to get her that medical care. Right. She dumb. She's Never very mind. dumb. I already know this. Thank you. So she texted me that, and then I replied with, "Thank you for proof of willingness to deny me my custodial rights, because now I have a bona fide electronic record of her being willing to forego medical attention for our daughter to spite me, so we don't have to be in the same room. She's more concerned with her own comfort than that of the child, and I have proof now. I've had to sit through." therapy sessions for Bubba with the ex and Mrs. Number One fan. And I've had to a couple of times go to the hospital with either uh, Pubert or Bubba and Miss, uh, the ex showed up. You know, I, I mean, I don't enjoy it, but it's her right to be there. We usually get along pretty well, you know. So, uh, but yeah, at that point, it's not about me or her. It's you're right, as you said, it's about the kids. And it's a very mature stance of the you two to interact that way and co-parent peacefully, mm-hmm. which she and I cannot do because she's a fucking dingbat. I can go there, and I know she's going to be a raging bitch, but I can put my anger in check long enough unless she has to over-explain herself and try to start some shit, which, by the way, next part of this, she did. <laughs> I showed up to the urgent care, and she immediately starts bitching and pissing and moaning, saying, we're going to leave, and I'm saying... No, you're not. Because that's denying her medical care. Well, I'll just schedule it for the morning. I'll get her a doctor appointment tomorrow. But this is an emergency. We're already here in the urgent care. You felt strongly enough to bring her, but because I show up, now you're going to deny her what you previously stated was mandatory and necessary medical care, all for your own comfort. Stupid, stupid bitch. If you try to leave with her, I will call the police. And I pulled up my phone, and I brought up the contact number for the county dispatch so I could directly call them instead of 911. To which she got more pissed. And she starts ranting a bit, and I'm trying to calm her down and just talk my way through it using very specific legal terms to box her in. Because that's when I know I'm really hitting all the right points. It's because she gets more agitated and fumbles for words, and just starts cussing. And the lady at the desk sees this shit 15 feet away. And I can see her give a look to the security guy who like, gets up, and I'm like, uh-oh. And then he walks back away, like beyond the desk into the rooms where the exams go. Mm-hmm. Then he comes back, and he's just kind of posted up with his arms crossed standing, waiting for something to pop off. And I don't know if it's because I mentioned police or what the fuck. Ten minutes later, she agrees to leave, but then spends 15 more minutes sitting there talking to the juice, 
instead of just leaving. She doesn't want to be near me. She doesn't want to see me. She doesn't want to talk to me. And I'm a shitty father for not taking her the night before because my training doesn't mean anything because I'm not a doctor. It didn't mean anything. They wouldn't spend all the money training people. I was first responder certified in college, for fuck's sakes, multiple times. And then I keep getting first aid and CPR certified through my old job. When I worked at the one company, every year we went through first responder training and CPR training, so I haven't had it for a while. But yeah, I mean, I could have easily assessed something like that. She doesn't know any of that shit. She can put on band-aids and she knows about icing things. But she sits there and constantly calls out mine and my wife's training and knowledge just because she doesn't like us, which is a very clear-cut sign of emotional immaturity. She's dumb as a box of rocks. No, it ain't just emotional immaturity. Well, she leaves. Yay! Finally. The mood changes drastically. The juice is happy. She's fine. We're sitting there. We're joking. She likes spending time with just me because she rarely gets just me to herself anymore. I had that comment from uh, Turtle the other day. You know, I want daddy-daughter time. Yeah. So we get called back, and then the medical assistant examines her and says, well, no, I think you did everything right, because if it was me, personally, which some people might say it's unprofessional for her to make a comparison to her own life. But she's a trained medical fucking professional. But anytime anybody in a position of authority or a professional capacity compares their own experiences to that of somebody else... People that don't agree with that mindset might consider it unprofessional. I'm sorry, but even any time they're at a doctor's office doing their job, they're taking their own personal experiences into account because everything they do is them. It's their personal experience. Whether they took a hangnail out of the guy in the room next to you or freaking gave this guy a shot in the ass because he has fever or something. Well, the reason I state that is because in the past I've known somebody that gave advice to somebody in a professional capacity about uh, custody. And that person, the other parent, was furious that they used an example from their own custody battle to give advice to the person that they were serving and then called that person's boss to say it was unprofessional. They mentioned their own life. Their own life doesn't matter for my life. Well, it's a comparative statement, so it does matter. So anyways, the lady says I did everything right and we were fine in how we assessed it and that we took good care of it, icing it and bracing it. So then we go get an x-ray. She was fine with the x-ray, which is awesome because years ago she got x-rayed for trigger thumb, which she had to have surgery for. Juice? Yeah, she had a trigger thumb. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, my God. All right, we're going to take a a sidebar here. We're going to go off on a tangent. The juice was like one and a half or two. The beast calls me frantic. Her thumb won't straighten. What the fuck? So it becomes this battle where we take the juice in to get x-rayed at an urgent care. Well, they do x-ray at the urgent care? Yeah, they do it there. And the kid cries because she doesn't want to hold still. She's scared of the machine. And the the beast screams at me the whole fucking time. Because I keep telling her that I can't believe we're here for this shit. Because she said, well, I called the on-call nurse at the ER because I thought that her fucking finger was dislocated. Because she couldn't straighten it. No, the kid had a tendon that was keeping it from straightening. Yeah. So she had a surgery to fix that. Back to the story. The x-ray goes fine. We get in the room. The doctor comes in with the results, right? And I'm sitting there on pins and needles like, fuck. Is this where I'm going to be proven wrong? And it's not even so much that I would have been upset that she's injured because I broke my arm jumping off the swings when I was six. The bell rang, I bailed, my left arm landed underneath me. Ouch. Yeah. Otherwise, I would have just landed on my back and hopefully just got the wind knocked out of me. I don't know, hopefully not been like a back injury. Far more pleasant than breaking an arm. So, yeah, the little bone, and I had to wear a cast in the summer. Same time frame as the juice. Yeah, but I had to wear mine for eight fucking weeks. A whole summer. And a little bit into the school year. So then, they say she's got a buckle fracture. And it's a frequent, it's from impact on the wrist joint. It's not even a clean break. There's tiny micro fractures in one of her bones near her wrist. Mm -hmm. So they fucking splint it and send us home. The next day she gets a cast. She's got to wear it for three weeks. So I was dreading that because I knew the the beast would not let me hear the end of it. Yeah, yeah. I was right. You should have taken her. 
Yeah, like because somehow I can't predict the future, what I thought was ample care now somehow becomes half assery. And she demanded that I bring her a copy of the visit summary. I know why she wanted it. She was hoping it would say that it was broken. So she could use that the next time we go to court and say, well, look at our daughter breaks her wrist and he doesn't take her to the fucking doctor. I would have been like, she assaults me when I try to help her find her keys. Yeah. Well, hey, that got adjudicated from a record. It's not on the state website. Yeah, I don't know why you didn't just start pressing charges on this horror so many years ago. but Well, I should have, but I didn't. That would have been a felony and that one would have stuck. That, that you, you have a heart of gold. Or is it a soft heart? What would it be? Probably a soft heart because I had a three-month-old at the time and I had no idea what was going to happen. So anyways, I get the summary. And here's where it gets delicious for me. All it has is care for the injury and explains the cast and keeping it dry and shit. In no way does it state what the actual injury was. Nice. Right. Because if she wanted to throw that at me in court, I would say, well, here's the thing. I did my best to assess it and it looked fine. And even that the nursing assistant or the medical assistant said she would have done the same. Whereas years ago, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't we have to go to the ER because at the time, Chi-Chi had got into your lower cabinet at your apartment where you kept glass baby food jars unlocked. She broke one, put her hand in it, and licked her fingers, and you were afraid that she ingested broken glass and therefore needed an esophageal x-ray? Didn't that happen because of your outright neglect in baby-proofing your apartment? I would totally bring that up. And then I told you that it was your fault, but you said, well, you took my screws. What that idiotic out of context thing means is the screws for the child locks. I accidentally left the spare ones in my drill case because I installed child locks in all of her drawers, but not the cabinets. So because I took four screws with me, she was somehow completely absolved of any responsibility to put breakable glass jars of food that a baby could access up higher. So the baby couldn't create the situation that we had to deal with that day. And thankfully, there was no glass in her. It was a false alarm. That was a one in a million lucky shot right there. So even though I bitched her out to the moon and she tried to pass it off on me, creating the perfect storm of circumstances for her to not be able to baby-proof her cabinets versus keeping it higher, you know, chicken or the egg, by stupid standards. I believe the circle has no beginning or end. And thus, because I didn't bring the juice to the emergency room, clearly I neglected in giving her proper medical attention for an injury that I couldn't detect even with a trained eye. I'm not saying I'm Doogie yeah, fucking you Hauser. Need, you needed a fucking x-ray machine for that. I mean, everything was fine. She was playing. A couple of days later, she's, okay, I got a little minor discomfort. You know, it hurts to pull on my hand like that. You know, I mean, I'm not just kissing ass here or anything just because we've been friends for so long. That seems to be the normal way things go. I mean, everything looked fine. She was acting fine up until a certain point. And I, part of me would be like, well, you're just playing that with your mom. You you don't want to do this or do that, so you're claiming something hurts. My kids have done it several times. I have a tummy ache. I can't go to school. Bullshit. Go to school. If you throw up, they'll call me. Then you can go home. She has such a hatred for you that it doesn't even matter what it is or how logical or how common practice it is. She wants to use it against you, which is why I keep saying you need to go to court. And fucking get custody. I mean, be done with this shit. It'd be an uphill battle for me and thousands and thousands of dollars. And we're waiting for her to fuck up more to find out if we can do that. I won't give away all the details because only a fool shows all of his cards at the table. Yeah, you don't gotta show nothing here. But, I mean, dude, fucking do it. So I got to her house to drop off the juice. And she's like, oh no, baby. She's like, it's okay. They say I'm going to get a cast, but it's only for three weeks. So she was a sport about it, like a thousand percent. And I impressed upon her not that she did something wrong by playing and hurting herself, but by trying to be fancy and it didn't pay. Like that was the injury was caused by trying to show off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Use it as a learning experience. Good lesson. So I got to hand the summary to the beast and I uttered this phrase. I practiced several times on the drive, so I'd nail it. With Oscar-worthy fucking dilection. You need to start GoPro in your life. I said, here's the summary. Uh, sorry it's not the irrefutable proof of neglect that you were hoping for. 
<laughs> Mic drop. And she's like, oh. Like, she didn't know how to respond to that because I fucking crucified any argument that she hoped for, not only with my candor, but with the facts on the paper. She wasn't going to get the damning evidence that she wanted. Anything, anytime you're with her, you can't record audio without telling her you're recording audio. She... Bullshit, that is a state law that you can record anybody you want at any time as really? long as you're on, you're not in like a government facility. But anyways, in the state of Minnesota, as long as one party is privy to the recording of the conversation, it's perfectly legal and admissible in court. You need to start carrying a recorder and recording this shit, dude. I've got too many fucking witnesses that'll totally go to bat for me. Yeah, but I'm just saying, fucking start recording this shit. They listen to five minutes of it, they're going to know she's batshit crazy. Well, she claims that they'll never let me get anywhere near the bench to show them uh, police reports from the past and past addiction issues don't matter and I'm going to embellish details and even my mom would go to bat for her, which I know is not fucking true because my mom knows that if she did that, she would never see her grandkids again. Yeah, so she thinks my mom's on her side, she's not. Thankfully, the juice didn't have a worse injury. It's a learning experience, but that was our trip to the urgent care, just like my trips to the Minute Clinic that devolve into diarrhea. Not literal diarrhea, but no, no, yeah. metaphorical spiritual diarrhea. Hopefully Kids this was an hard. entertaining explanation, because by the end of the whole getting to the fucking urgent care, I just wanted to take a ball-peen hammer and give her some new skull dents. I remember... Uh, Bubba got injured at the ex's wedding. They were uh, it's odd. Yeah, they were throwing the um, reception at their their cigar shop that they had, and totally uh, an environment for children. Yeah, I don't know how many hours the boys have spent there. Um, but uh, they were having a party there, and they had a TV set up with a, a Wii so that the kids had something to do, and. Bubba took a Wii remote to the head right above the eye and it got cut. You know, it was like a impact cut splice or whatever. It split. And uh, she calls me up. She's like, you need to take him to the hospital and get him looked at and everything like that. I'm like, what? Wait a minute. Wait, he's on your time. But I'm at my wedding. It says, have one of your family members do it. I know both your sisters are going to be there. Your mother's going to be there. They can take him. It's not my fucking responsibility at this point. Sounds like a shitty father. I know. Uh, well, finally, not really. That's the downside of it being her time, and she thinks it because it's her special day that suddenly you have to cater to her every beck and whim. But no, you don't. Yeah, like my special days never get ruined. So I was like, all right, fine. I'll come pick him up, but I'm not guaranteeing I'm taking to the emergency room. She's like, okay, just just come get him. I get there. It's a little tiny cut. I don't even think it's a quarter of an inch long. It's not very big. He wasn't bleeding anymore. I just I brought him home. And Mrs. Number One fan and I put a cleaned it up, put a bandit on it, and he was fine. Never took him to the emergency room or anything. But she's like, "You need to take him there and everything. You should take him there. He needs to be looked at because it's so close to his eye." I have a theory. She wasn't concerned about his well-being. She was concerned about him becoming an inconvenience at the party and drawing attention away from her. Yeah, you you, you know her. She's an attention whore. Hmm. It has to be about her. That's just my armchair psychology theory. I seriously theory on think that one. the only reason why her and I she accepted my proposal way back when, when I was young and stupid, is because then she'd go around to her friends and say, "I'm engaged." I seriously think the only reason why, she, when she got pregnant, that she remained pregnant was because now she could walk around and say, "I'm having a kid. I'm married, and now I'm having a kid. I'm pregnant." Because all she's done with those boys since uh, day one was to trot them on like they're trophies. Hmm. You know? I mean... Even pubert with that dirty little mustache? Mm-hmm. I have yet to teach him to shave. Wow. I will. Eventually. It needs to be thicker. But, uh... I mean, that's all she's ever done. And it... it I don't think she does it to make me look bad, but it's, you know, it's all about her. So... It is. It is. Interact with the show on Twitter at what do we call it. That is at... What do we call it? You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash what do we call it podcast show for the what do we call it podcast. I'm J-Man. And I'm number one fan, Tim. And that's the end.